Getting her wound up.
know, it's one of those things if you only knew, you know, and, and, I, and I think of today, what, what would you put in a barn today for 30 years, like, uh, you know, a Ford Escort, uh, you know, so uh, you know, I, I can't think of things that are built this way. And, and this one in the predecessor of the training aircraft is the NAT-6 or the SNJ. Uh, once again, that thing's built like a tank, and uh, they're 75 years old this year, and they're still flying strong and the way they were built. How much was the cost for a new one back in the day? Uh, about two hundred thousand dollars for the new one back in the day. And what makes the, what makes this plane special because it was you know they talk about American ingenuity is this plane came on production in one hundred and twenty days. So uh, I used to be an executive at Diamond Aircraft. If anybody knows Katanas and Diamonds and things, and we're working on the DJ program. I was had like. 150, 200 engineers in a room, all these auto works, saw the works and stuff, and they still can't get the thing to fly right. And uh, <laughs> you know, this plane here, uh, those side rule pencils and pens and so forth, back in the 40s, the math back then, they went from uh, drawing design to production of flying in 120 days. So they, they just don't do that anymore. Can we move you back? There's a lot of people here I can't oh. hear you. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so. No, no problem, no problem. So. The good questions, guys. The good questions, so. I just want to shake your hand. My name's Jim. I'm a uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. So, so but, uh, and, and the, the whole short notice. I saw the feature in AOPA magazine early in uh, middle of July. And uh, uh, July. And uh, I thought, well, it's going to be too late to get them here. So I called, we tried to get the trailer, and she said, can't get the trailer, it's booked. How about the P-51? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we worked on it, and I said, we got to get it here. Yeah, we, we moved some things around for you guys, so we can see the right uh, the Boy Scouts and stuff. So. And uh, we do a lot of 40-week schedule. And, uh, it was on short notice, and uh, so it works out well. Well, the whole, the whole idea of this aircraft, that we are on a traveling show with the Rise Above, and if you've seen Red Tails or the Ski Driven movie, we're really focusing on the, the airmen who served, and and they're finally getting the recognition that they deserve back in the day. And uh, you know, one of the things that they're known for is their, their record. Uh, they had a very impressive record as far as the squadron. They had a very impressive escort record. <laughs> yeah, so it's so, excellent. A little bit, little bit too much CGI for me. So, <laughs> so yeah, we enjoyed it. The, my favorite is the uh, nine, the '98 version, the Ski Airman, the HBO one with Lawrence Fishburne. So that that is uh, probably more impactful. If you're interested in the story, out about that too. yeah, a lot of good documentaries out there, and, uh, and what the guys had to go through, and, and I, I'm lucky enough I get to see a lot of the airmen a lot of the time. They're in the 85, 90 range and stuff, very spry. Uh, they're great guys, and uh, it's uh, one of those exciting things when you uh, we do different shows where we have several of them come out, and I get to concierge with them with my daughter sometimes. And when after the shows are done, everybody goes home. Uh, we get you know take them for dinner, get them fed. You know they're 80, 90 year old guys, right? So you got to take care of them. And those guys get talking, oh, remember when Skinny Johnson was on the ring and he fell off? These guys talk like it was yesterday. And uh, it's, uh, you want to put a tape recorder out there. They're great guys, very spirited, had a, you know, really did their did their job. Um, uh, Roscoe Brown, you know, Kim France, he shot down the first ME 262. And, you know, a lot of things. They finally got the unit citation. And, uh, and actually, the Tuskegee Airmen uh, Squadron and the gentleman, Harry Stewart, was actually the first Top Gun winner uh, back in when it was called Red Feather, and he won the trophy in a P-47 and uh, out uh, out west, and they denied him the trophy because of uh, because of color. So that just recently has they found the trophy and all the pictures at the Smithsonian in the basement. So he's now been awarded the. Uh, and they have all the documentation and what have you. And this, there's no way they possibly could have done that well, and because uh, they, they did it before. Uh, oh, this is fantastic. So uh, it's uh, actually this is the second. Pennsylvania show we did York Pennsylvania about four or five weeks ago and uh, and I said the provincial the Pennsylvania crowd was on our website it's probably the most informed crowd of air show enthusiasts I've met tomorrow yeah I had, I had a young guy in York Pennsylvania he uh, yeah, and, you know, we, we freshly say uh, wing nuts or propeller heads or whatever. Yeah, yeah he came and he's asked you some good questions and stuff, but we, he downloaded the manual for this plane the night before, and he, spent, and he goes, so what's the uh, uh, CCs of the third cylinder? I said, hey, buddy, they just told me don't press the red button. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I know. I just drive the thing. So.